Howdy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran T. Murray, Paul T. Long. What's happening, Ignite You? Paul T. Long in the house, I should say, in the car. <laughs> We're uh, going to take a little drive. Hey, I think, so I learned something new, I think, over the weekend. Really? So normally, normally, we're backwards. There's Paula Dane. So we're backwards uh, when you guys are watching us. But I think I just hit the button so that actually now we're regular. We're, we're, you, it looks like we're actually riding in the car the right way. So, so it looks like I'm driving then to them? No, it looks like I'm driving, oh. but to you and me, it's backwards. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I'm going to throw this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so somebody, somebody, when they come on, tell me if uh, we look right. Actually, I'll just see it when we, when we do the video or when I see it <laughs> later on. So uh, we're back here in the car. It's Tuesday. It's 10 o'clock. We're heading out for a little drive. I'm going to take Paul T. Long for a ride through Lakewood. May not bring him back. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. <laughs> Asked him a few questions about networking, about the stuff he's got going on. And uh, hey, Phil Peterman. Hey, uh, welcome, Phil. Hopefully, you got a hold of Shannon, buddy. Um, anyway, so um, let's start with this, Paul T. Long. Can I call you Paul T. Long? Yes, Karen T. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be all official. We are absolutely. So uh, maybe we'll just maybe we'll just say like PT Long. That's for short. Because Paul is so long. PT Long. PT. 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 <laughs> so tell me what uh, what is it that you, that you do? Well, I network a lot. <laughs> That's really what I do. But for what actually pays the bills, I work for Timberland Bank in their business banking. Uh, been with them for about uh, three years now, which time flies. Really? Ooh, I know. I know. Weird, huh? oh, um, but this is my 20th year in business banking. How's that for a random fact? 20th year and uh, how old are you? Uh, I would be 34. I have to think about that. I'll be 35 this year. So... So yeah. hold Go on ahead. a second. Do the math. Go ahead. That, yeah, that means you were in business banking at 14. No, you didn't do the math right. You said you're 34 and you said you've been in business banking for 20 years. I started in 1996. You said you were, you're 34. 34 and you've been in business banking for 20 years, which means you were 14. Do you really want to be my banker? Really? <laughs> This is how you want to start out the conversation. That's a, can we delete and start over? That'd be great. No, so I know it's 20 years. I know, that's right. Because I started a week after my 16th birthday. Do I have to get out a freaking calculator? That's 18 years. I guess you're right. I guess it is 18. Where the hell was I getting 20? Shit. It's a hell of a long time in business banking, okay? And you started at a young age. I started a week after my 16th birthday as a bank teller. Uh, for a large institution, uh, became a branch manager at the age of 18. And Did you guys hear that? Branch manager at the age of 18. And that was over in uh, Yakima area, right? Spokane, actually. Were you going to go to school there? Is that what you're doing? I went to school at Eastern. Oh, so, so you grew up in Yakima, and then you, went, you were heading to Spokane to go Spokane to school. Spokane to go to school, okay. and I moved over with the bank over there. And um, So I was a branch manager at age 18, and then at the age of 21, I became a district manager for a cluster of branches, um, actually over up in the like Tequila, Renton area. And um, a few years after that, I got really sick and tired of babysitting grown adults, which is quite sad. Um, and so I really wanted to find what my passion, well, I know what my passion was at the time, and that really was the business banking. Um, so that's the, the avenue that I went, and I have never looked back and I absolutely love what I do because it's, um, it's really helping people rather than managing. So. And hopefully you've got a lot better grasp on like interest rates and that kind of stuff because that basic math has seemed to... You know, the basic really... math's a little tough. Two plus two is six at Timberland, so sorry, my bad. <laughs> I, I couldn't have asked for that intro to go any better. Well, and well, here's the thing though too. How many years have I said I've been with Ignite U? Uh, I I've said four, four for at least the past, what, two four or years. three. Right. <laughs> four years ago, you started saying four years. Right. So I, so exactly. The video I did earlier in the week, I think I, I moved it up to five. So I, I saw that. So that's, so uh, let's I'm gonna talk about Ignite U. But first of all, I know you have a big project you're working on, big event coming up uh, real soon. Tell us about that. Yes. Every year um, for the last three years, this is my third year, um, that I put on the South Sound Small Business Summit, which is my way of giving back to the community 
of getting business owners in a room together, similar to like Net You, um, but we definitely look at it and get um, people to speak on what it is to really be in business. And so um, this year we, uh, or actually a few years ago, we had a few Ignite You people, you being one of them, and which did a wonderful job. Um, this year we have Mr. Brian Harding of the Plumbing and Drain Company. He does a great uh, job talking about how to grow your business. Um, and as well as three other local individuals um, that you should really hear from when it comes to marketing, referrals, um, successes and failures in growing a business and all of that. And um, again, it's my way of giving back um, and shameless plug, you can go to the website, uh, ssmallbizsummit.com and get your tickets, 30 bucks, super cheap. And it's a... Uh... It's a two-day event, isn't it? It is a one-day event this year. It is. It is. It's from 8 to noon um, at Star Center. So we kind of packed it all into one day, nice and um, quick and easy, and but yet a lot of great information. Awesome. Great awesome. Event. All right. So now let's go back to, have you really been with us for five years at Ignite U? It's got to be. When did you start? Nice came. Did, I you, did you come to the very first Ignite U event? No, I did not. So you came to the second year, I think. It was the second year. So, so what would that be then? That was 2012. Uh, like November, October 2012. 18. That's five years. So we were right. So at least Eight, you got small 18, now. 18 minus 12 is five. This is 2018. That was... 2012. So 12 to 13, 13 to 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, six. Okay. <laughs> I need a calculator. Did you bring a calculator? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm so oh, glad this man. is live. I'm so glad this is live. <clears throat> yeah, like, no editing on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's somewhere around five-ish, maybe. Who knows? Uh, so may, I'll start using oh, six then. Oh, my, my word. This is funny. Wow. This is so. Funny. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so tell me this. Um. Uh, the title of what we had today was that you've closed, what is it, like $2.5 million in, in business loans through the Ignite U Connection, through the Ignite U Network, is that right? $2.5 million, and that's either through direct with the group or referrals from the group. Um, added a few extra, a couple hundred thousand here over the past month, too, so actually that number's a little bit higher. Nice. And that actually, you were telling me before, that doesn't include transactions for some, for people that you know in the network on oh, the yeah. personal side well on personal side checking accounts aren't included in that that's just loans um so again that's my primary focus is loans but on the deposit side too my gosh 15 to 20 and of course there's obviously a what a 20 percent rounding error that i like to make <laughs> <laughs> yeah because my math's so good <laughs> so so when you said 15 to 20 mm-hmm you're talking about 15 to 20 million. No, 15 and 20 checking accounts okay. or credit cards. I was gonna say, holy other, smokes, that's where I got a lot bigger. Yeah, I know, no, no. So it's it's a lot of business. I mean, if I really went through and did what the revenue would be, um, it, 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 it's a lot, awesome. it's a lot. So <clears throat> how does that happen? So, Cause I know you do a lot of networking in a lot of different places. People know you all over the place. Um, so let's, let's dial it into Ignite You. How does that happen? How do you get to be the guy that everybody, um, is, you know, they consider you the go-to guy in banking? And how does that happen over the last five years? It's definitely showing up, um, as you definitely say in boot camp. And that is, a, it's absolutely the truth. Um, being that face and whether that's consistently posting on the members only group, whether that's showing up, um, that is all that is all the case. So definitely being present and networking one-on-ones, um, talking with as, 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 mid, as many members as possible. And um, especially now with the group growing, that's that's more one-on-ones, that's more times that um, you gotta be at Ignite You, and that's really where my success have been. So <clears throat> tell me about that, the, the showing up part. So um, in your case, um, what does that What does that mean? So um, I know you were here before we even started the Tuesday group. So you were here when it was, a, it was just Friday a Friday only, only and then yep. we started Tuesday. Yep. So what is what is showing up for you? What is what is your mode? How often do you show up? Um, what what's your what's your ga your game plan for that? 
So definitely um, Fridays have always been the easiest for me and so therefore I'm there and there's there's so many people on Tuesdays and I'm here today on a Tuesday which is good. Um, and there's a lot of people I haven't met on a Tuesday and so I'm really trying to focus in my own uh, world as well to be able to um, be more present on Tuesdays as well, which is important. But again, showing up as often as humanly possibly, even better, trying every single week um, if your schedule can allow it. So how often are you there on a Tuesday? Right now, not very often. I'm pretty trying, sporadic? Uh, pretty sporadic right now. Um, I try, I'm trying to be more of once a, once a month at least, and then I'm usually every week on Friday. So what will be interesting today is tell me at the end, because while uh, Brian... Uh, we had Brian Harding in the car two weeks ago, and then he stayed for the Tuesday meeting as well, like you're doing today. Mm -hmm. And he got in there, and we had oh, 100 and, I think 107 people were there that day That's that good. Brian was there. And we got done, and Brian walked over, and he said, I hardly know anybody in this room. He said, they're all like new people. It's like an entirely different meeting. Um, so I'm interested that when you're there today, I'm sure you're going to know a number, quite a number of people, but sure. just let me know, because um, I, I think that's really interesting to see the two the two days and how different they can be because people always ask me that all the time. So Fridays, you're always there on Fridays mm -hmm. unless you got something in the banking world that keeps you away. Yep. Um, and a, an occasional Tuesday mm -hmm. when you're there. So let me ask you this. First of all, where do you think you'd been had you over the course of the last five years shown up to one Friday a month? Boom. Not two and a half million, because um, it, it's all about relationships. It is all about relationships that ignite you. Period. And anytime I try to get guests uh, to come over, that's what I'm talking about. You know, and you can't just go try to sell the room and leave. I, I mean, <laughs> not in this group. You can do that at maybe other, you know, BNI groups or that type of stuff, but you can't do that at ignite you. So, do you find um, because you've you're so well-rounded and networking all over the place. Um, do you find that networking is different at Ignite U versus, because you do you do chamber stuff. You do, you've do you done like B&I type stuff. You've done, mm -hmm. you've done Ignite, you've done, you probably networked more than anybody in our room, I'm guessing, with all the different number of places, special Correct. events, all stuff. Yep. Um, what is the difference in, in our room at Ignite U versus other rooms? Well, the difference is, is, is definitely that I've been a part of the Ignite U group for five years, and I can't say that with any other networking group that I've been a part of, because it truly is about the relationships, and it's about having a group full of friends in a room that, oh yeah, we do business. That is, I think, the biggest deal, rather than <coughs> forced to by gunpoint to refer to XYZ, I want <laughs> to be able to refer to somebody. Um, rather than the, the other way, and that's why I still continue to do it. Hi, Angela. And and you belong to uh, you belong to chambers longer than five years, all right? Uh, true, but on and off because it diff there's different types of events of the chamber, okay. and so it, 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 it depends. But this Ignite U is the only one that's been consistent on my calendar, always. Really? Really? I didn't even I didn't even know that. Yep. That's uh that's nugget number one. I'm always looking for the nuggets. I'm, I'm just waiting for him to come out. So nugget number one from the guy who um, is probably more well-networked than anybody in our group in, as far as the number of places he's networked and been is that Ignite You is the only one that's been on his calendar consistently for the last sure. five years. Yep. Everything else is a sporadic hit and miss. Mm -hmm. That's pretty incredible. That's, that I think that true. says a lot. Yep. When we get in the room today, I want to remind people that because I think that's huge. Cool. Um, so when you are when you get into a room like Ignite U, um, what is your um, um, strategy? Yeah, what's your strategy? What's your? <laughs> do you have an agenda when you go in? Or? Oh God, no! You never have an agenda at a networking group. That's that's yeah. That's ugh. no. Don't do that. Um, definitely, I I definitely sometimes, especially with Friday mornings. Believe it or not, I'm not a morning person. Um, so it, sometimes it takes a couple extra cups of coffee to kind of get there, <laughs> but I try to do that before I get into the room. <laughs> so that's why you'll see me usually on a Friday morning, I will come in yelling and screaming through those doors because I, I have to get in that. I, I have to, sometimes you have to turn yourself on and, and that's, that's one of the things that I do. And I love how we do that. So, uh, so are you, are you doing that because you've already had coffee you come in the room or you got it or you're doing it? to match the energy level that's already there. I'm doing it to match the energy level. I, yeah, wow. I have no coffee when I wake up. 
So you come in, so if it was a, a normal group, you could just walk in and you'd be matching the energy level just walking in. Correct. But you come in and we've got the music cranked. You've got the, by the way, for everyone uh, that's wondering, we're going through the car wash right now, classic chest car wash. <laughs> and in a second, it's going to be really loud, so we'll take a break when that happens. And um, and I would give Paul T. Long a coupon for a free car wash today. But I gave the last one away, and uh, Amber Foley is in uh, Disneyland this week. Woo. So uh, Paul T. Long is going to have to take a rain check. Deal. Thanks. And uh, this, this is going to go over us here in just a second. So, so hey, let's be quiet for a second. Oh. <laughs> this is the loud part. I wish I had one of my flyers for the event. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's on your table today. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a vibe. All right. So Paul was just talking about when he walked into the room that our that our energy level is so high. It's come. It's uh. I know it's completely different than any other group you'll walk into because and we do that intentionally. That he has like a ritual or routine of yelling, screaming, jumping around, whatever, to match that energy level to get him up to that level as fast yep. as possible. That's another. It's better number. than coffee. Yeah, it truly is better than coffee. Wow. Yeah. Another nugget. There so okay, so you so you come in the room and you and you immediately the first thing you want to do is match the energy level of the room. What do you do next? Um, next, I mean, go around and just start saying hi. Um, as as a person who's networked a lot, there's always, and I'm sure we all have those same people that will gravitate true to. It's like high school sometimes. You'll you'll go up and you'll say hi to some of those people you know all the time. But the challenge is is to not do that. You really need to go and see, say hi to a few people you don't know. Um, that is really the key. And so I may go up and say hi to a lot of few people that I, to a lot of people that I know. But I'm going to challenge myself to go around and say hi to a few people that I don't know, um, or sometimes that I forgot that I have said hi to before. <laughs> um, so that is that's really. Um, one of the main things because again the whole point of networking is to get more to talk to more people and of course establish continued establishing the relationships of those you actually know how about i notice there's people sometimes that um and you know when you when you're coming every week you're always going to be at a table with someone you know that's you're always going to yep. have that but i see people that'll come in and they'll be like three to four of them at a time and they'll actually sit with each other at every meeting they're at mm -hmm. um so it's not that they're sitting down and they're next to people they already know. They sit with the same people every single meeting. Nope. Tell me about that. I mean, how does that, how does that affect, how does that impede their networking? How does it, does it, is it good? Is it bad? What do you think? Oh, I mean, I would say it's bad because again, this, I mean, you're always going to go towards what you're comfortable with, but in networking, you need to try to get away from that because you need to find new people to be comfortable with. Um, and that's the whole thing is you need to sit with as many people as possible. There are several times that if I sit down and there's no one there and all of a sudden people start coming there and it's a bunch of people I know, I'll probably get up and try to find a new table. Uh, Sorry, it's not against you. It's just I'm there to network. And I've noticed other people in the room doing that too. And I think I don't take it personally. I've sat with you 20 times. See you later. I, yeah, I noticed. Uh, <laughs> all right. We had some other people on the Kevin house and uh, um, some others that we're talking about. They wait until the meeting's gonna start, and then they look for where they can go plop down a chair yeah. in between two people they don't know, and I thought, Absolutely. that's pretty smart right there. Absolutely, there's um, a strategy. <laughs> how about, um, do you uh, do you make it a point to, when you're there, since you know so many people, you've been there five years, uh, or and, and or six, between five and six, <laughs> or which might be 12 in Paul's case, we don't know the math yet. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, do you take it upon yourself to act as a, uh, well, yeah, I mean, you could actually call it an Ignite You ambassador. Do you take it upon yourself to take people around and introduce them? Maybe they're newer to the group. Maybe it's their first day and you've just run into them. Uh, but maybe it's someone who's, you know, been with us for a couple weeks and you just, you just, uh, met them. Do you take it upon yourself to take them around and introduce them to a few people or do you just let them go? Do you have any, you have any strategy it on that? It is obvious who the new people are. In my, at least what I believe. And what there's something about where the coffee is, is where they like to go and right there by the chairs and the coffee. They like to hang out there and they're usually by themselves kind of looking. Those, those are great people to go up to and say hi and 
Um, you know, hey, what do you do? I'm a real estate agent. Okay, what is who's somebody that you really want to connect with? Is it bankers like me? Is it mortgage people? Is it, you know, what is it that you're looking for? And based on that conversation, I'll look around the room and try to connect them with other people of who they're there to connect with. I'm just wondering as we're sitting there talking about that and you're sitting there answering that stuff, I wonder if it was sometime in the near future if we should look at having some sort of a formal ambassador program where we have people who are actually there. Maybe we had them in some cool Ignite U shirts, like this nice green one that stands <laughs> out, but a cool shirt that people would know they're part of our ambassador program and they're they're moving around the room. I don't know if that would I don't I, know if it would help hurt. I'm anything. gonna challenge that because I'm gonna say that we have, we have so many good networkers <clears throat> and people in the room that I think there's natural ambassadors. I, well, I totally agree with that. That totally I, d- I don't think we need that because if there's someone that's there by themselves, you're not going to be there by yourself for much longer. There's yeah. enough love in that room to do that. We don't need to be like a chamber. Sorry. <laughs> no offense, Five Milton Edgeford Chamber. <laughs> by the way, you should join. <laughs> Hi, April. <laughs> uh, and it's a different, it's a completely different feel. When oh, you, yeah. t- you talk about there's so much love going around, um, you know, there's one thing I've noticed is... Um, the people have a tendency to be more open and not have to worry about am I am I um, am I putting on the professional uh, air or so you know so I can I think people can let their hair down a little bit at our events. Oh my gosh! Do you feel that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And do you think that provides for a better networking experience when it comes to building relationships or? It's building relationships and building <clears throat> friends. And I think that's that's the big thing. I mean, I, there's countless people in that room that I've been to their house and had bears with on their couch. I mean, there's a lot uh, that are in that room, and it's because of that environment that you know. Again, you almost start as friendship, and then oh, we do business together as well. Right. So, <clears throat> give me some um, some tips for <clears throat> excuse me, some tips for um, newer people coming into our room. Um, that haven't been there. You're the guy that's been there between five and six years. Um, you're doing well. People know you. Um, what? What? Give me like three top things. If you had to write down yeah, um, the, the the networking world according to Paul T. Long uh, for a new person that came in to ignite you, and probably what I'll do is I'll go back, I'll write this down, and then I'll put my name on it, and I'll take credit for it. So really, oh, of course, kind of, absolutely. Kind of, kind of give us some good deep thought here, but. Three things. If you were gonna, if you were gonna take a brand new person and say, you got to do these three things. Don't worry about anything else. But these three things, when you come to ignite you, what are they? Uh, one is, I would say, don't be afraid to walk up to anybody in that room and say, "Hi, my name's Paul. I'm a Timberland Bank." Or, "Hi, I'm so and so." There is nobody in that room that's gonna look at you weird and say, "What? What? 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 What are you? What are you doing here?" You know. Sometimes chamber events can be that way. Um, no, uh, not the five Milton Edgewood, by the way. Um, so that's, that's one thing is just feel free to go up and do that. Um, two is definitely don't start selling your product right away. You will stand out like a sore thumb. If you go in there with your agenda of selling or, and doing that, that, that will hurt you a lot. And how do you see people doing that? What are they, what's, what, what, what is happening that they're selling? I mean, are they... Um, what what are they doing? I mean, are they I, I pulling mean, out a pricing chart, or I mean, what is it? Um, you know, it, it's cool to give a business card. You should have a business card. It's a networking event, and you should give it to somebody you that you don't know. That that makes sense. Um, I've seen brochures. I've seen um, immediate. Um, um, uh, Hi, my name's John. Hey, let's immediately set up a one-on-one so I can tell you about my XYZ service. Whoa. I, 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 I didn't even barely got your name and you're already trying to set up to sell me something. Um, I, I think people are getting better at that, but it still sometimes happens. So tell me what's a, um, a good strategy then. If they're brand new, you got three minutes at a table mm-hmm. with, with up to seven other people. What should they be saying? And I'm going to come back. I haven't forgot about number three, but sure. what should they be talking about? What should they be saying um, when they're at the table? Especially especially in the beginning so they're not repelling other new uh, other members. Well, I think that one of the important things is is for you to 
look at the people at the table and try to figure out, you know, what, what is everybody? You know, am I at a room full of finance or a table full of finance people? Do I have a bunch of service businesses? Who do I have at my table? And cater your talk to them because people want to hear what's in it for me. What's the benefit? So if you can maneuver your talk to be able to, to do that, that is definitely going to, to be very helpful on that. Okay. All right, let's go to number three. <clears throat> Ooh, number three. So I would say um, I have energy. Um, and I know if you're, especially if you're new into a room, you're naturally going to have that, that shyness because you do maybe don't know anybody in the room. But I would definitely go in there and be, um, <coughs> be excited to be there. Um, that's, again, another difference of Ignite You is is the energy in the room. So even though you're new, I challenge you to walk into that room with a very different sense of excitement you, that you are excited to be there because that is going to have people want to come and meet you because of that. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that one. I've had people, <clears throat> a guy did an introduction one day. I think he was a, a brand new person. Mm -hmm. It was his first time in the room and he stood up front and he said something like, uh, Hi, my name's Paul T. Long, and I'm really excited to be here. And I, I'm not sure if I grabbed the microphone and said, maybe you should tell your face. I, I don't think I did that, but that's what <laughs> I was thinking, have. you know. You should have. <laughs> and I was like, you should tell your face how excited you are to be here, because right now no one's convinced. Yeah. But, um, and you know, one of the things uh, uh, we were talking about earlier that we do is sometimes, especially in a room the size of ours, um, it can be intimidating and a little bit scary, especially for a brand new person walking in the room. Sure. And so it can be a challenge to have that energy because you're a lot of times you're just like, what am I, what am I into here? What's going on? Yeah. And that's why we have such a high energy level is we want to, we want to, you know, pull people up to that energy level. We want to, instead of trying to have a mediocre meeting where we're trying to get people to, you know, get excited and stuff, we want to provide that first and have people walk into that room where you're just, you're like in a soup and you come and swim in our soup of excitement and abundance and all those kind of things. Um, and so I'm going to give you 3.5, 3.5. And that is even as a new person, go stand at the door with everybody else that's meaning, doing, meaning that's, what? that's doing the exciting and the welcoming, be a part of the welcome wagon. Yeah. So when you come in the door, right. Go in there, say hi, you know, you know, and again, it's, it's different, but that is the best place to be because you're actually high-fiving new people. They don't know who you are. So yep. you may get some introductions there. You get some of that FaceTime with the room. Um, again, I'm sure it's a challenge for some, the, some of those individuals, but I challenge you to do that. And I think you'll see a, a very different, you'll immediately see why people are so excited in that room. So let's talk about that door for a second since I got you here. Um, and the door greeters are, for those of you who haven't been to our room or maybe you're new to the room, um, the door greeters are however many people, it's totally volunteer, so you go up there and we got the music cranked, but they are there high five and everyone as they walk through the door and they're shaking hands and they're greeting and, greeting and welcoming everybody and it really changes the energy of the room. So when you walk into the door, people are like, I've had new guests walk up on a yep. Friday morning that have said, they've said to me, have you guys been here all night partying since Thursday night and you're just like getting ready to go home or what's going on? I said, no, that's just how we are on a Friday, Friday morning. And they're completely uh, blown away, but it changes the, the level um, of energy and excitement in the room. Um, so, so tell me in all of your networking, do you go any place else where you have the thing like that, the door goes and it's going crazy and rising up that level of excitement. <laughs> um, and, uh, the next part is, how, what do you what do you see the importance of that? What do you, um, and what, um, you know, what, are you going to recommend it to all the members to get over to the door and change that level? And what what's the importance of that? The importance that I really do believe is that is having that FaceTime with the membership. And that's a great way to do that. Um, of course, having six minute commercials or the six minute presentations, but being there and being able to say hi to so many people, I think is really important. Um, oh, and I had another thought and it dropped it away. <laughs> See, that's why you got for giving me two things to think about. Dang it. Um, ah, dang it. And, Sorry. and, and I'm going to go, you know, you just did 3.5. 
I'm going to go, I'm going to give you 4.5. And I'm sure when I say this, I'm sure Paul's going to go, oh, I should have started with that one. So 4.5, number one, is all that stuff that Paul was talking about are all great tips. And when you implement those, I promise you um, that you'll, you'll be successful with them. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that if you don't do it, none of that stuff even matters, and that's showing up. If you don't show up, you can be the greatest networker. You can be the most personable person. You can be um, sexy, hot. You can. It doesn't matter if you don't show up. And I talk about this in boot camp. You can actually show up and never speak and do okay in our room because here's what would happen. Okay. It would be your shtick that people would now start to go, hey, there's that guy who never speaks. And they'd sit down with you and they'd take pictures sitting next to you and go, I had a chance sitting next to Paul T. Longday. He's the guy that doesn't speak. And now people are going to come up to you and go, well, can I get his card? I don't want to know what the, I don't want to know what the guy that doesn't speak does. And you would actually get you would get more traction and be like your thing, right? About the guy who doesn't speak. Now, I'm not recommending you do that. I'm just saying that as long as you show up, that's the most important thing. You wouldn't have to say a word. And so the big thing about showing up is like Paul was talking about was getting that FaceTime with people. Mm -hmm. You want people just to remember your face over and over and over. They've got to see your face. And so all that stuff that Paul was talking about it comes in right snugged up behind showing up. If you don't show up, none of that matters. And, um, and then take, take the lead of three and a half off what he just did. And, mm -hmm. and you're going to get to where he is because this guy is, it's gotta be one of the best networkers I've ever seen. Uh, and he's, and, and I was saying this to, uh, to Mark Mattingly when I had him in the car too. Uh, and Mark is the same way, but Paul is really, he is a much, much, much better networker than I am. Paul can go into any room, whether um, it doesn't matter. It can go into any function, and Paul feels natural and comfortable, and he can talk to whoever. I'm only that way if it's a, an event that Sherry and I are hosting. Mm. Um, if I go to somebody else's event, I'm the introvert. I'm the wallflower. I'm doing. And that's not Paul. Paul is. Uh, heads and shoulders above a better networker than I am. So here's what I'm going to recommend is get in here and meet the guy and just do what he does. Follow him around. He'll introduce you to people because he knows so many, but take it from him and just do what he does. Well, I think another thing is too, and I think Ignite U has helped me be a better networker over these five, six years because, for example, you know, you have the door greeters here. Why don't you start that at a networking event that you're at? Why don't you be that change agent to go in there and if there's nobody at the door at the XYZ Association, you be the door person. You say hi to people. That's that's how you become a better networker and you use those skills here at Ignite You out in the community mm -hmm. in other organizations. You know, the, the people that I've noticed, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times we'll get them in the car and we do the interviews like with this one. Mm -hmm. The people that are getting the best results are the people who've never done any networking before. So they don't come into it thinking no they know. They, yeah, no bad <laughs> habits. They they're not coming in thinking they know how to do it. It's true. It's people who just like the picks were with us here last week. Yeah, they'd never done any networking at all, and but now they've, they've done, mastered it. Oh, they, and all oh the, God, all they do is them. they just make friends. That's right. And they're they're all and so they network. They make friends, and those people do business, just like you were saying. And that's Amen. that's it. And it's let me ask you this one too, because we got a couple more minutes. Um, you talked about consistency before. If it's you know if it's every Friday you're here. If it's every Tuesday, you know you should be here. If, if that's someone, if they're doing a Tuesday. Yep. And in boot camp, we always talk about pick one of them, make sure you're consistent, and then add the other one in uh, later on. Yeah. So on. consistency is a key. Now talk to me about um, longevity, persistence um, for the long game. Because here's what I see for for oh my gosh, most people networking. I mean, by far, they don't give it nearly enough time. And they think oh. that they're going to get these results really fast. And when they yeah. don't, they stop. They're done. So you've been with us for between five and six years. Tell me about the importance of the longevity and, you know, how long when people sign up for Ignite You or any group, how long should they give it before they should expect results? Wow. I mean, definitely, again, networking is a long game. That any networking is a long game. Now, the good news is I think Ignite U is a little faster than other organizations when it comes to seeing the your return on investment. 
but I definitely think that, you know, pretty much on average, one year. You have to commit a year for people to get to know you, for them to feel comfortable to come up to you, say hi, shake your hand, know who you are, um, and then that, that relationship really starts to form. Again, if you don't show up, there's no relationship forming, you're not gonna get any business. Um, so just by having your name on the Ignite You website doesn't, isn't going to get you anything. It's showing up to events is going to get you something in creating those relationships. So to answer your question, I would say a year, I would say it's a little faster with Ignite You, but I think it's a year is that, is that thing. And it's probably, I think it's probably faster because we have so many people in events here. You're exposed to more people Absolutely. more often. Absolutely. So last thing I have for you, because we, we talked about for people who are members and what they can be doing inside the room. Mm -hmm. uh, my last question is, there's going to be people, we'll put this up on YouTube so the public can watch it. We'll put it out on LinkedIn. We'll put it out on Facebook so people can come back and watch it. There's going to be people who watch this video who are not members yet. They keep hearing about this Ignite You thing. You mean there's people um, that aren't Ignite You members yet? There are. We need to Where find, have you been? We need to find them. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> does networking, um, and I, I have my answer, is networking beneficial for any professional business person regardless of a business, in your opinion? Anybody should be in networking. I, I look at what we just did on this video. We went to Classy Chassis Car Wash, and and again, I, I I haven't met the person from Classy Chassis Car Wash, but just having that, you, you, that's business. That that car wash was not free. You probably paid for it. Right. So again, it's it's that type of business. So regardless, if you're a gas station, if you are a car wash, if you are a service base, a product base, you make a product, you sell a product. Regardless, you need to network. Um, and you will see success come from it. There is no doubt about that. I, it, I don't think there's any industry that's, uh, I don't know about that. And it's the success might look different in different industry because there's some where you go, yeah, I don't know how the network is going to really fit in with, with this particular industry because it's a lot different than like a retail where I'm going to sell you something. I'm going to get money back and there's a transaction. Correct. But, um, but I'm like you, I believe that any, any, um, any professional should be networking. Um, so for people who are um, looking, we got a nice gentleman come to the window here. <laughs> <laughs> Julius Caesar, he's with the uh, Auburn Chamber of Commerce. Who oh, remembers, we got some- I did not know that. You didn't know that? See, that's the thing. So you're gonna meet awesome. a new guy. Mm -hmm. So, hey, stay right there, we're gonna come to you. Okay, I'm a, I want you to meet this guy too before you go, hold on, I'll, I'll be right out. <laughs> so uh, we actually have chambers, uh, chambers of commerce who belong to our group. So he's uh, uh, Caesar's with the uh, Auburn Chamber of Commerce. We got the Fife Milton Edgewood, and those are really great organizations. Yeah. I believe actually all of our chambers around here are great organizations. Oh, and we we always uh, actually encourage our members to join chambers and expand the network. Absolutely. Um, so um, for people who are not members yet, any business uh, out there, any industry. What do you tell them about checking out Ignite You? Definitely, if you want to be inside of a room that's that's a different networking group and gives you the opportunity to make lifelong friends and walk away with business, then Ignite You is the place. Boom. Period. That's it. So uh, we're going to head in here. Uh, Paul's got some stuff to put out on some tables because he's got his event coming up. He's going to hang out and network with us today. It's going to be interesting to see what he says today um, because... Uh, uh, he was normally not here on a Tuesday. Here's my recommendation. If you are a member, you got to meet this guy because he knows so many people. So I would just walk up to him and I'd say, hey, Paul, would you do me a favor? Could you introduce me to a few people? And uh, he would be more than oh, happy absolutely. to. He'd love it. Absolutely. Um, if you're not a member yet, you got to get in here and meet Paul and, um, yeah. and just uh, sit, sit at a table with him and see what he does and pick his brain about membership and whether he thinks it would be a good fit for you. Um, and I, I trust our group to people like Paul as much as I do myself. And, and he speaks on our behalf uh, quite frequently. So um, this guy knows his stuff. He's really good at what he does. Uh, networking, banking, uh, the whole ball of wax. And um, I'm really glad, Sherry and I are really glad that over the last five to six years, uh, he is one of those guys that we count as our uh, very, very, very good friends. Um, and um, we're excited about that. So. Hey, we're going to go in the room here. We're going to see you real soon. Hope you guys have had a, a great time watching this interview with 
my good friend Paul T. Long, and uh, we're going to see you networking real soon. See you, everybody. Awesome. Thanks.